right, we're going to get started today with an activity. And I just want to walk through it and we'll talk about what happens as it happens. So I have some ice water and I'm going to pour in 200 milliliters of ice water. I don't want the ice cube though. Come here, little ice cube. All right. And then I made that blue water on purpose because we identify cold water with a blue handle. And then I have some hot water here that I brewed. And we're going to, oh, look at that surface tension. Pouring it all over the place. And I have 200 milliliters of hot water. Now, what we're gonna do, oh, I've got a napkin right here. Let's wipe off the red. I have these thermometers. I hope they're working. I'm gonna put one into the ice water and one into the hot bath. All right, so the ice water, oh, that one is acting up. There we go. So my ice water is, the temperature is dropping. I don't know if that camera can get any of this. Let's just see. I doubt it, but I'll have to just talk about what's going on. All right, so our hot water, and we're going to talk about degrees in Celsius. It's 62 degrees Celsius. This one a little closer, you might be able to. You yeah. think? It's the next one that I want to try. And then this one here, the cold water, is at approximately 5 degrees Celsius. And our hot water is approximately 62 degrees Celsius. I'm going to pour these two cups of water into this beaker. We have 200 milliliters of cold water, 200 milliliters of hot water, and we're gonna mix those two together. So we should have how many milliliters of water total? 200 plus 200 is 400. But my question is, when I mix them together, right now our water is at five degrees Celsius, and our hot water, it dropped to 60 degrees Celsius. So we have 60 degrees Celsius and five degrees Celsius water. When we mix them two together, are we gonna have 65 degrees Celsius water? Let's give it a try. All right, here we go. Here's the trick. I'm gonna pour these in, and then I'm gonna put the thermometers in. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it, but we're gonna watch what the thermometers do. All right, I'm gonna pull these out really quickly. Hot water cold water and I'm gonna put them together so what I see is I'm seeing my hot water thermometer go down oh it fogged up my hot thermometer is going down and my cold is going up and they're almost meeting they're almost meeting and I'll tell you where they're meeting here in just a second we're at 30 we're at 31 they met at 31 degrees Celsius. 31 degrees Celsius. So roughly 30 now. So they're at 30. So that's interesting. So we had hot water that was at 60 degrees, cold water that it was at five degrees. And when we added our liquids together, we added that total, that volume up to get 400. But when we add the water together, the temperature wasn't additive. It didn't add on top. So it wasn't 60 degree and five degree and make it 65 degree water. It was actually 60 degree and five degree Celsius water. And the hot water got colder and the warm water got, excuse me, hot water got colder and the cold water got warmer. And the question is why? Why? We've watched, oops, it's already red, but we can talk about it. The red water, if you remember, we dropped food coloring into the hot water, and those molecules are bouncing around into each other much, much faster than what was in the cold water, all right? The molecules in cold water are not moving as fast because they don't have as much heat energy. And what happens is the hot water molecules are bouncing around, ding, 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 and when they come into contact with the colder molecule, they bounce into it, and they start causing it to be in motion. 
And what happens is the hot water loses energy as it bounces into the cold water molecules and the cold water molecules gain energy and eventually they start moving around at the same rate. So what we have is we have something called equilibrium. It's when those two temperatures of the different waters come together. All right, so that's pretty cool. I need you to find a piece of metal in your house, something metal. So if you're watching this in your living room, find something metal that you can grab for me right now. All right, so I want you to grab it. And, and what I mean is like, I could, you could get a spoon. You could get a spoon. I just grabbed this, it was closer. But it's, it's, nope, I don't want you to grab a fridge. I want you to grab something sitting in your room that is just sitting there, okay? So I'm gonna grab the leg of this chair right now. And I want you to, I want you to think about what it feels like. Describe it to yourself. Does it feel cool? Does it feel warm? What does it feel like, all right? So, and then I'm gonna grab the other side where I haven't touched it. Man, that does feel really cool. It feels cold. All right, and then I'm gonna grab something else and I just happen to have a piece of wood here on the table and I'm just gonna to touch the wood. So you should try this. Maybe touch the couch or touch the chair you're sitting on. Does it feel different? It does feel different. The metal feels cooler to the touch versus the wood feels warmer, right? Would you guys agree with that, that it, it might feel warmer? But what if I told you something? What if I told you that these two objects that are sitting in my house have the same exact te temperature, all right? And we're gonna use the water as that example. So I have a little heat gun here, a little temperature gun. This is, this is 69 degrees. And this is 69.1 degrees. They're the same temperature. I'm gonna take the temperature of the table right here. 69.2 degrees, so almost the exact same. Um, I'm gonna take the temperature of my cabinet wall back here. 69.4 degrees. So everything is about the same temperature in this room, even though some things feel different than others. So when I touch this metal, it feels really cool. When I touch the wood here, it feels rather like almost neutral. It doesn't feel cold, it doesn't feel warm, it just doesn't feel as chilly. And then I can touch the glass. It feels different, but they're all the same temperature. And my question is, why do these objects feel different? And it's because they absorb heat energy from us differently. So our bodies are approximately 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I take the temperature of this table, which is 69.5 right now, it's bouncing up and down a tenth of a degree. When I put my hand here, my body is warmer than this tabletop. So the molecules in my body are behaving differently because we're producing heat energy as humans. Heat energy is being taken from my hand to the tabletop and the metal sucks the heat energy faster from your body. And that's why it feels colder because you're losing heat energy faster than the tabletop or the wood. And then it brings me to this. What is this? It's a styrofoam cup. And when I hold this, it doesn't, it doesn't feel cool at all to the touch. It just feels like nothing. But if I take its temperature, I'm taking the styrofoam cup's temperature. And right now it's at 69.9, and that's because I was touching it and it was getting a little bit of heat energy, but styrofoam we know is a good insulator. So objects that take heat energy very quickly and rapidly, we call those good conductors. Things that don't take heat energy away as quickly, we call those insulators. A lot of big words today. Equilibrium, when things come to balance. Insulators, conductors, things that don't take heat energy, things that do take heat energy, and I want you to think about when you're outside in the summer and it's hot and you get a cup of soda or a cup of juice or water and you put ice in it. If you put it in a styrofoam cup, does it take, does it keep its temperature longer than a cup that's not insulated as well? I've got these two hockey pucks. 
So I'm going to put them down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of ice. And we know that if I hold a piece of ice in my hand, it starts to do what? <laughs> the camera just fell. If I put a piece of ice in my hand, the ice starts to turn from a solid ice cube to a liquid water. And now that we're talking about this idea of heat transfer and heat energy, we know that the heat from my hand is going into the ice cube. It's causing those water molecules that are frozen to have more heat energy. They start breaking those bonds. They don't hold to each other anymore and they turn into a liquid. All right. And my hand is really cold because it's sucking the heat energy out of it. So I'm going to take an ice cube and I have these two All right, I'm gonna take these two ice cubes, I'm gonna put them down, and we're just gonna watch them for a second. Can you see both of those? Yep. So this one over here, it's melting very, very rapidly, and this one over here is not melting really at all. And it makes me ask you the question, why? What is happening over here that's not happening over here? Or what's happening here that's not happening here? This ice cube is melting. It's, it's more than halfway melted at this point. I'm just going to slide it over here. Well, I'm not even going to touch it. Look how fast that's melted. I've never seen an ice cube melt that fast. And this one isn't doing anything. And the question is why? I want you to think about it. We just introduced these two words, insulator and conductor. And not like the choo-choo train conductor, choo -choo, but like a conductor, like an object that takes heat energy and absorbs it very rapidly. Or an insulator, like styrofoam, that doesn't absorb heat energy. So this ice cube is touching this plate, nothing is happening. This ice cube is touching this plate and it's melted, it's almost completely gone. So my question is why? This ice cube, these hockey puck looking things are not made from the same material. This one here is made from a metal. This one here is made from an insulator like styrofoam. Now what's really interesting, earlier we said that our tabletop was what, 69.2 degrees roughly, right? Roughly 69 degrees. And the question is, is how is this melting the ice cube? So the ice cube is getting heat energy from this metal but the metal is absorbing heat energy from the table. And what's neat is I can take this and move it away and it feels really cold there. And if I take that temperature, it's at 59.8 degrees Celsius. Sorry, Fahrenheit, Celsius, that'd be like really bad. <laughs> it's 59.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This over here, that was 59.6. This right here where it was sitting, is actually at 70 degrees Fahrenheit now. So this is a really good insulator, didn't allow heat energy to transfer through it, which means it's not giving off heat energy to the ice cube. This one allowed heat energy to travel through it very easily. It gave the heat energy to the ice cube and it also took the heat energy from our tabletop. It sucked it out. Heat energy always travels from objects with higher temperatures because they have more heat energy to objects with lower temperatures because they have less heat energy because those molecules are moving faster and are bouncing into each other, crashing into each other. They want to become equal. They want to become balanced. And that is why that melted so quickly. I love this demo. We used to do this in my classroom when I was a teacher. It's just a lot of fun to show you that different materials behave differently with different um, solids like ice. And I've got this ring. I call this a ball and ring. Put on my goggles for this. And this is brass, and it just fits through, right? So one thing I want to say is no magic tricks going on here. just want everybody to pay attention. So what we're going to do is this is a demonstration. This is not something that you're going to try at home because I'm going to use some open fire. And I have a torch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this brass ball right into my flame.
and I'm gonna let it get nice and hot and this flame is burning at a very very high temperature I'm not exactly sure of the temperature of this flame but I know it's well over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit so we're gonna let this get nice and hot now a second ago we saw that the brass ball fit through the ring and we're gonna see if this does anything right so here we go it doesn't fit and you can see I'm pushing really hard it's bending it all right it gained all that heat energy it doesn't fit and I'm bending you can see I'm pushing through but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the water listen See all the steam. I'm gonna let it cool off, and for lucky, it fits again. So why does that happen? This brass ball, as it gets hotter, what did it do? If it didn't fit in here, the brass ball had to do what? It had to expand. And so when things get hotter, they typically expand. Those molecules have more energy. They're bouncing around into each other. They want to expand and get bigger. And so they expand a little bit here. Let's try it again. So, well, the other, the other option would be is to what? Heat this up? I mean, it fits already. But we can make the ring larger in theory, right? Let's try it. See what happens here. I've got an idea what's gonna happen. What do you think is gonna happen? Do you think the ball is gonna fit through? I'm just gonna put this here, let it make sure it's nice and cool. Oh wow, look how easy that fits through. I mean, there is no it just goes straight through. So this ball and ring is a great demonstration to show you that when things get warmer and hotter, they have a tendency to expand. And I wanna talk about our handle here. So this is brass. I don't know the exact specific heat capacity of brass. We could look that up, but it tells us how it gains and loses heat energy. But look at this, this metal rod is attached to this and it's inside a wooden handle and it makes me ask the question why do I have a wooden handle here why isn't it just metal it's because this is an insulator it allows me to hold this safely because this rod when this gets heat energy the heat energy travels from this point up into the rod into the handle and if I'm holding metal I'm gonna feel the heat energy in my hands And I'm going to, well, I'm going to ask you, if I put flame to the balloon, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? If I put a flame to the balloon, what should happen? All right, make that prediction. Whoop, there goes the balloon. I'm going to get another balloon. Same brand, same balloon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of water into it. Twist this off. Twist. Ah, that's why I twisted it like that. Okay, turn it over. And I have just a little bit of water in the bottom of that balloon. There we go. Uh-oh. Thought I heard a hole, but I don't think it was, I just had it squeezed good enough. All right, so we've got two balloons here. One has water in it, the other one doesn't. And what we're gonna do, whoop, that blue balloon has a mind of its own. I'm not sure if this, how this candle's gonna burn here in this fish tank. Oh, it's such a little baby. Okay, it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this down here 
And when it comes into contact with the balloon, it popped a hole into it. That was kind of weak. Let's see. I couldn't find a regular candle this morning and last night. Here we go. I'm just going to put a flame to the bottom of this. Sorry. All right, so the balloon popped. The hot air from the flame touched the rubber and it caused the rubber to tear and cause it to pop. So my question is, I added a little bit of water to it. So I'm going to hold this over here just in case we make a mess. But my question is, is can I put this flame underneath here and what's going to happen? I know I can do it, but the question is what's going to happen? All right, start making predictions. Is it going to pop? Is it not going to pop? What's going to happen? All right, we can see the flame is touching, right? But it doesn't pop. And what's really interesting is there is all the soot from the flame. So we know it's been touching it, right? So it's not an optical illusion or anything like that. We actually had the flame on the bottom of the balloon. And my question is to you, what happened? The difference between those two balloons. So the only difference between the balloons is what? We have water, vasa. So the water inside of it did something for us. It actually was absorbing the heat energy from our flame. So when the heat energy Look at that. The heat energy from the flame is touching the rubber balloon, but the water is touching the rubber on the inside, and because of that, it's absorbing the heat energy fast enough to prevent the balloon from popping. And just to prove that it's a real balloon, it's the same balloon. I just wanted to prove to you that it was gonna pop. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use some flame for this. We know that paper catches fire, okay? And obviously this is not something that you're doing. This is for demonstration purposes, but this catches fire and it will burn, all right? And what I have here is some water. I'm just gonna extinguish it. Because what we're gonna try is I've got a $20 bill and I've got a $1 bill. And my question is, do you think that I do you think that I can put flame to this without them burning? Based on what we've done today. If I put this into this igniter, is this going to burn this paper? I think we should find out. So we're going to give it a try, but I'm going to use a little science to help me. I'm going to take my $20 bill. And I'm just going to hold it here just like this. So I have my copper pipe. And I'm going to bring it right across my $20 bill. And the paper's not catching fire. And the question, ooh, but I was going to say what the question is, why? And I can feel the copper is really, really warm. Copper is a fantastic conductor of heat energy. All right. And look at this, to prove that I had it in the flame, there is all the schmutz, the soot. Um, but that's what this does. It dissipates the heat energy. It's like a heat sink. And it gets, takes the heat energy from the flame, goes through the paper, and then it goes through the, the copper pipe very rapidly so that the heat energy isn't being absorbed into the paper as quickly, which prevents it from catching fire. 